It's Friday, y'all. It's Friday. You know I had to spice it up. I told you when we hit 100K, there's going to be a little something extra. You're like, I hope it's not It's not that, Jed. I hope it's not you doing some type of version of the wave retro stuff. It won't be. Trust me. It'll be really, really good. So you got to get that subscriber account up to 100K so you can find out what's in store. So big show today. Happy Friday, everyone. I'm very ready for the weekend. Very, very ready for the weekend for many reasons. Um, It is a taco Friday. So let's all start with that mood. When I get, I don't know about you, but when I look forward to food, I'm immediately in a better state of mind. Anyone else out there? I love how I I do this as if you can answer me and reply. Well, you can. Top G is here. Tyler is here. So you can reply in the chat. So if you're going to have a taco Friday of your own, you need to let me know. Maybe you got a recipe that I need to get my hands on. Just saying. All right, today's going to be a fantastic show. I watched this panel with King Riches and Just Pearly. It's fantastic. Uh, my eyes were just glued to the screen like I was watching some terrible reality show, but like a reality show that's bad, but really, really good. Some other girls on the panel. So here's the topics we're going to dig into today. Do females prioritize physical attraction or do they prioritize personality? All right, we know the answer to that, but what are they saying they prioritize? What's their justification? I'm going to tell you why they're lying. They're lying. They lie about it a lot. We're going to talk about that. How does a guy behave when he's really into a woman? It's very different how a guy behaves when he doesn't really like a girl versus when he really does like a girl. We're going to dig into some of that. I'm going to show you some of the worst wingman advice I have ever heard in my entire life. And odd, it's coming from a woman. So it's actually wing woman. You're going to see. You're going to want to see this video. And we're going to talk in general about what women really care about in general versus what they say they claim to care about. Oftentimes what they really care about is like somewhere over here. And what they claim to care about is like on an island somewhere over here. So you need to know the difference. I also got a lot of questions about the World Economic Forum, the matrix, the system. A lot of you sent me uh, questions on IG. So I just want to delve into that a little bit more and explain to you Number one, if you don't care, why you need to care. And number two, what does that look like in everyday life? Like when we talk about a power grab from the top down, what does that look like? And why is it relevant? And why does it relate to what the Andrew Tates and the Sneakos and all these guys are talking about, Andrew Tate in particular, when they talk about the matrix? What does that look like? Should you be scared of it? Should you not be scared of it? Should you maybe not be scared of it, but empower yourself to defeat it if and when it arrives at your front door, which it very well may. So we're going to dig into all that. Before we get started, I want to tell you about who our show is brought to. Our show is brought to to you today by a very, very special partner. Um, I recently had a conversation about the fertility crisis that's happening in this country and around the world. And one of the key components of that discussion had to do with endocrine disruptors. And I know someone in the chat threw that out and mentioned that the other day. Endocrine disruptors, neurotoxins, the chemicals in our environment. And Where is that coming from oftentimes? Well, it's coming from your environment. It's also coming from a key place that you don't think about, which is the cookware that you put your food in to prepare it on the stove. So let's say, let's imagine this. Let's say you wake up one day and you decide, I'm not going to be defeated by the matrix. I'm going to take care of my health. I'm going to take care of my body. Great. You buy all natural whole foods and you start cooking them. That was all great until you stuck them in a pan or a pot that leaches out crazy toxic chemicals. Everything that all that non-stick buy at the store stuff is typically not only not made in the USA, but it leaches all of that stuff into your food. So you put this super healthy food, that grass-fed beef, whatever it is, into that pan. And what you get out is not that grass-fed beef, but is that grass-fed beef combined with a bunch of toxic chemicals. We don't want that. So check out 360 Cookware. Number one, it's 100% made in the USA. Very hard to find. Number two, it's stainless steel. So it's ridiculously durable. Like this is something that you can buy today and you're going to have for a very long time. And by the way, if anything does happen to it, you have a lifetime guarantee. That is how confident they are in their products. Most importantly to me, this is a product. And by the way, they have bakeware, they have pans, they have pots, they have all sorts of good stuff. 360 Cookware, you can look at their website. Everything is chemical free. Everything is completely non-toxic. So you know that if you put your food in there for yourself, your child, your wife, your family, your husband, whoever it may be, it's coming out with just the food, not the food loaded up with a bunch of chemicals. So I know the holidays are coming up. 
I know maybe you're sitting out there saying, well, I don't cook. Someone in your life does. Someone in your life, if not you, cooks homemade meals and values that. If you want your family to be on a path toward health, you have to be conscious of what you're cooking this delicious food in. 360 cookware. I'm telling you, man, it's the only cookware I use in my house. I told you I was never going to endorse or promote anything on this show that I don't use myself. I use this across the board in my own home. I bought it for my parents. They absolutely love it. I bought it for a friend. She's obsessed with it. She's into baking. Thank God. I'm not a, a, a good baker, but... Her cupcakes are dang good. So, all right, I have a special offer for you today. You, are you ready? Because I know Thanksgiving, Christmas are coming up. 25% off with my code. All you got to do is go to 360 Cookware, and we're going to have the link, by the way, to that. It's going to be in the show description right below. 360 Cookware, 25% off all your purchases with code Jedediah. You just got to put J-E-D-E-D-I-A-H in there, and you get 25% off. So if you're looking for those holiday gifts, You don't want to show up with nothing. That's bad. You got to be a gentleman. Guys out there, you're going to want to get this. And I'm telling you, man, this is a product. This is a company that I love. I know them. I've gotten to know them because, you know, when I buy something, I ask a whole bunch of questions. I drive people a little bit nuts. They really believe in what they're doing. It's a chance to support the US of A. And it's a chance to know what's going into your products, right? There's nothing worse than doing something good for your body. You think you're doing something good and you wind up inadvertently without realizing it, putting all types of chemicals in there. It's bad. I'm telling you, that stuff heats up on the stove. So think about it. Anything that you heat leaches. We can't have that. 25% off, 360 cookware, code Jedediah. Get on in there. Okay. King Riches, who's ready? All right, we're going to start. I'm going to dig right in, Tyler, 1349. Let's play that clip from the start. This is good. Y'all, this is good. I'm just saying. Women only swipe right roughly 5% of the time on dating apps. 5%. Boys should be more women, selective women, as well. Women, <laughs> no, women are very selective. Um, typically, women think they're hotter than they are. Um, they find 80% of men is unattractive. Mm-hmm. And this is like, you don't notice the guy at KFC. I mean, you don't notice the guy at McDonald's. You don't get notice the guy behind, you know, at Tesco. There you go. Think about all the guys. Just like today, each one of you, yeah, when you've been outside, yeah, think about today, the guys that you registered, yeah, and then think about all the guys you didn't register. You didn't even look at them. They wasn't even, they didn't exist to you. That's hundreds, hundreds yeah. every so single day. We can pause. You know oh, I mean? no, did them cry me so that's, yeah, she's going to say cry me a river. There's a girl in the middle that's going to drive us all crazy. By the end, you're going to be like, Jed, I've gone gray thanks to you, because there's a girl in the middle that's going to drive us all nuts. But it's important that you hear this stuff. This is a very valuable point, and we've been talking about this. We showed a clip the other day with um, Godsad and Joe Rogan where they were talking about male status. And there was that McDonald's experiment where the guys are dressed in, in McDonald's uniforms and they're just ignored. Women care about status. Most men are invisible to women. Most women are not invisible to men. And you know that. Women are extremely picky extremely picky which is why you have guys on these dating apps that can't get anywhere they're not getting any swipes they're getting aggravated this is the culture of the modern world right dating apps well guys are on there and they're not getting anywhere and you've got women who are a six a five a four maybe a four trying to amp themselves up to look like a six with all the makeup and the hair extensions and all that stuff and they're getting swipes like crazy so women have a really hard time understanding the lack of attention that most men get They have a really hard time empathizing with the reality that guys, many guys in the modern world, they're sexless, they're not having sex, they're not getting dates, they're not getting attention. When women at their very same level walk down the street, put on a short dress, do whatever, and they get a ton of attention. It's not the same. It's not, they're not living in a parallel universe. There are big discrepancies here. And that's just a reality that most women don't want to acknowledge. You know, they feel like their experience is being lived like this, like the guys. Oh, yeah, well, I'm getting a bunch of attention, so they must be getting a bunch of attention. Sit back and self-reflect and own up to the fact that you ignore most men that you see. You're very picky. And you feel privileged enough to do that because you feel like you're getting all the attention no matter what. You're going to have plenty of options, so you don't have to give that guy time of day. That's why I always tell the guys, you got to get your you-know-what together. You got to be at the top of your game because this is just a reality of the world we're living in, unfortunately, this enormous dichotomy between the sexes. All right, let's keep going. 1717. This is a point that we're going to see thread through the whole show. Physical attraction versus personality. Get ready for some lies coming your way. Who's ready? Let's go. Two guys approach you. One is your type. One is absolutely not your type. And they say the exact same thing. One will be like, oh, yeah, this guy was flirting with me. Oh, my God, it was so cool. And the other guy's, oh, he's creepy. Yep. A hundred 
percent correct. And women, if you're being honest with yourselves, you know this. You know that two guys can send you the exact same text message or can approach you and say the exact same thing. And if you're attracted, you're physically, sexually attracted to one of them and you're not attracted to the other one, the guy you're not attracted to suddenly becomes creepy to you and the guy you are attracted to, you will accept all those advances. You'll be flushed in the cheeks. You'll be feeling all types of tingles. You know it. So women oftentimes will say things like, oh, it's personality I care about. And we're going to get to a clip on that. That's downright hilarious. And it's not true. They care about your personality after they've already decided they're attracted to you. So females value physical attraction. Now, what does that mean? What does physical attraction mean? Well, it means right off the bat, does she look at you? Are you somebody she immediately itemizes as someone that she'd want to have sex with? Let's be straight. That's what women do. They look at you and they say, "Mm, are you her type? Meaning, you know, say she likes, you know, tall, dark, and handsome, and you're it. Okay, you fit that. Check. Do you have a good presence? Are you self-confident? Because some of it is attitude, right? Some of it is the way you carry yourself. You're a confident kind of guy. But most of it, most of it is does she look at you and physically want you? Only after she decides that she does is she willing to look at all the other attributes. And I don't care what they are, frankly. They could be something, you know, as simple as your personality or it could be your money, your car, your house. I'm telling you straight up, if she doesn't want you to jump her bones, none of that other stuff matters. So women lie oftentimes about how much they prioritize this physical and sexual attraction. This guy is 100% correct. So oftentimes you're doing the right stuff, guys. You're doing the right stuff and you're like, well, And then she'll say something like, oh, that's creepy. And you're like, why? Well, it's creepy because she doesn't want to sleep with you. It's creepy because she's not physically attracted to you. And she's just not willing to vocalize that. So I'm here to vocalize it for you. Let's keep playing. And we're going to get to the chat, by the way. uh, Super chats get in there. I'm going to try to check in as much as possible. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you like the content we've been doing on the show. Super chats, I want to hear from you. So Tyler's here. Uh, After the next section, I'm going to check in, Tyler. You have a little bit of experience being a fact check. Yeah, and guess what? I never had problems and I never really cared because I always had my own self-confidence because what matters the most is who you are as a human. We Mm -hmm. continue to talk about, oh, men, and they don't get girls. Men can't approach girls. Men get rejected because you're focusing too much on the sexual aspect of things. Put that Mm -hmm. to the side and you're going to go further. That's why some some ugly ugly guys get good girls. No, bro. Trust me. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. At the end of the day, (laughs) you're just saying fairy tale. This is... This is it's the bull, truth. This is BS, bro. Like, I'm a pretty girl, and I'm speaking bruh, to guys that are not and you've on my never, level. You've looks. never gone. Uh, you, you don't go out there and approach women, bro. You don't do it, so you don't know what you're talking about, bro. Like you really don't. You just you're just coming with theories. Do you no. know what I'm saying? Like, bro. Mm-hmm. Like at the end of the day, you can you can love yourself and have all of this. Oh, feel good stuff, bro, 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 bro. Guess what? If the women think that you're unattractive, bro, it doesn't matter. It doesn't There's a matter. lot of unattractive guys that got game. What? A lot of unattractive guys uh, that got game. And guess okay. what? And guess no, what? actually, go on, go on. I have dated multiple guys that, like, I'm not trying to be mean at all, but, like, I feel like <laughs> <laughs> I I might be, like, a little bit better looking than them, but I'm more of a personality person. Mm-hmm. So, like, if a guy has some personality, can Okay, let's pause laugh, it here like for a second, because this know, is... Like, This gets juicy. This one. This one's too much. Um, We're going to get to that in a second. I just want to break down so we don't wind up with a list super long that I have to get to. I write my little notes here. So this this issue of self-confidence. I love this when, you know, women in particular come out and they say, well, I, I, as long as I'm confident, I don't care what you think about me, what you say about me. The reality is self-confidence is important, right? Because you can see that. You can smell that on somebody if they're insecure. That's not attractive. So confidence does matter. But straight up, let's be honest. If you're feeling confident and you go out, you get all dressed up and you go to the club and you go as a female with a bunch of female friends and you're the only one that no one comes up to that night, you're going to shrink down a little bit, right? Because you went out with the intention of turning heads. You went out with the intention of some guy coming up to you, whether you were going to hook up or not. I don't know. Maybe you were going to get a number for later, but you wanted that attention. If you don't get that attention, you're not going to stand there and be like, well, I'm self-confident. I don't care. Come on, man. Let's not lie. It's going to have an impact on how you feel, especially if all the girls around you in your little girl huddle are getting all that attention except you. So right there, he's right. He's saying like, oh, this stuff all feel good, nice, oh, self-confidence, I don't need you. This is like, I don't need a man, all this nonsense. Let's be honest about it. And people do care about how other people view them. They do. They do to an extent. So that's just nonsense right there. 
Now we're going to get into the personality, okay? We're going to get into this girl that you just heard from briefly is going to talk about how she values personality, okay? I'm trying not to crack a smile, but it's not going well, above all else. And she opens there, as you saw, saw, saying that she's, you know, dated some guys that were below her level. All right, let's hear what else she has to say. Let's give her the benefit of the doubt. Let's go. Like, pretty friendly. Like, Mm -hmm. I feel like... I will go for that guy over the more attractive Can guy. Can I ask you a question about those guys? Yeah? Of course. So those guys that were, let's say, sub, are below average. Let's just say they're below average in looks, but their personality okay. was an eight. Yeah, boom. Have you ever had a, a scenario where your friends may have been like, oh, you know you could do better than that? Oh, absolutely. But I don't oh. care. No, so, absolutely. No, but Listen, that's though. Very... Absolutely, they might have said that, but I don't care because I am more attracted to, like, the person than, like how they might physically appear. Yeah, but don't you see that that is actually... Cool. Especially as a tall woman, woman, because I have dated multiple woman. guys shorter than me. And yeah, but don't you doesn't think... doesn't bother me. But don't, don't you see how, like, um, how that is actually a big factor in the whole, in the, in the general... In the general public, sure. Yeah, but because you may, you may see it Can like I see that. what they looked like? Absolutely. I just, I'm just I mean, curious. Yeah. Because usually when girls tell me this, I'll see pictures, and they're usually fine. Mm. <laughs> let, me, let me see. I'll see. I'll, I'll be. I rank people. All right, all the time. I mean, don't don't show it to the podcast. I'm, I'm not but. gonna. I'm not okay, gonna let's that. pause here. And they go through the pictures. And I just pearly winds up saying, just so you know, in case you're waiting with beta breath, she says, "Oh, she's the guy's about a five or a six. Um, what's interesting about it is this guy, by the way, that she pulls up. This happens later. Happens to be like six four. Okay, so already he's in the high top percentage when it comes to height. So he's not like your average Joe walking down the street. He's already tall, which we know if women like that, you know, that's that's like the high echelon. Oh, height, 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 height. Okay, so I would love to ask her. Gosh, I got to do a panel, man. I would love to ask her these guys, these personality guys that you're drawn to all the time. Honey, where are they? Or did you dump them? Where are they? Where are they? You're not with them anymore. Where are they? Okay. Well, they're not here. Why? Because you like their personality, but you weren't attracted to them enough to deal with a lot of their other nonsense, right? Bottom line is if you are physically, sexually attracted to a guy as a female, you're going to put up with other stuff that you don't like. You're going to be much more inclined to put up with stuff you don't like than you would if you were with a guy that you weren't physically, sexually attracted to, regardless of how amazing his personality is. So let's just be honest about that. You're not going to prioritize his personality if you're not physically, sexually attracted to him, or you're going to think, oh, this guy's got a great personality. Maybe he becomes your friend, ultimately. Maybe you're willing to friend zone him because you don't have that heat, right? If you have that heat, you're not talking about his personality first and foremost, okay? If you've got that heat, that chemistry, that sexual tension, you're not talking about his personality until step two. You're talking about that heat first. When you call your girlfriend and you've got that heat and you think he's hot, you're not like, oh, he's got like a really great personality. No. If you make that call to your girlfriend, she's going to say, oh, really? Is he a little, is he not good looking? Hmm? Why are you talking about his personality, first and foremost? Because she knows how women talk. The first thing you say, the first thing you say is the first thing you see. You are initially drawn to somebody's physical appearance across the room at a club. Are you drawn to his personality across the room at the club, honey? You can tell that he's a comedian or, no, you are drawn to somebody initially because of what they look like. By the way, I'm not suggesting here that there is an objective, like, oh, this is the one guy, one type of guy that everybody finds handsome. I'm not saying everybody's got to be Brad Pitt. I actually don't like Brad Pitt, but I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is everybody's got their type. Everybody's got their stuff they like. Some people like, you know, the blonde beach guy, you know, the surfer guy. Some people like the guy in the suit, the finance guy. Some people like the guys I like that look like they just rolled out from under a car. They can fix your car. Handsy. You know, I like that. (sighs) I need a fan, Tyler. I just got myself excited. All right. Uh, But you know how it is. It's your type. What I'm trying to say is if he's your type, that's number one. So these girls are living in some type of deluded world. Um, And again, yes, attitude matters, but that's all grouped in to sexual attraction. And just think about that phone call. Girls, be honest. If you're in the chat, listen, when you meet a guy, when you meet a guy and you're really into him, really into him, and that sexual heat is happening... What is the first thing you tell your girlfriend? Do you talk about his personality? Be straight. No, you don't. 
You talk about it after you talk about how much you're helping you jump your bones and how great that's going to be. Let's be real. Come on. This is the real zone. Also, I think it's interesting. She says like at one point for the general public, honey, what do you some Kim Kardashian stuff going on? The general public like, oh, the peasants among the peasants. These rules apply. But, you know, for people like me, come now. What was that? Did you all catch that moment where she was talking about the general public that she wasn't part of? Hmm. I don't know. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, let's go to 44, 44, 53. Oh, this is the best. This is the best. This is a woman who is a wing woman for a guy. She's, oh, you want me to check in with the chat, right? Oh, Tyler's giving me like, uh, dude, you said you were going to come back. See, I get too excited, y'all. Let's go, Tyler. Iron Disciples gave five bucks. So the personality guys are in the friend zone. Uh, uh, Avashi butchered that. Uh, appreciate your support. <laughs> uh, I gave fifteen dollars. Said one. How do I overcome my fear of approaching women? Two. I feel like the things I'm passionate about, like art, aren't manly and appealing to women. Thoughts. Okay. So first of all, the way you become more confident, you just gotta like work on yourself in a way that, like, if you're doing things that you feel really good about. In other words, if you're in shape, if you're financially stable, go to the gym that day. The day that you are going to go approach a girl and you're going to go to the club, I tell guys right before they go, wherever they're going to go, person's house, house party, I don't think a club is a good environment to meet women if you're looking for something real. So say you're going to a house party, you're going to, you know, it's it, at least some degree of like filtration happens there where it filters out some of the crazy. Go to the gym right before it pumps you up, it amps you up, that you got to get that testosterone flow and you're feeling good about yourself. So you got to get yourself to your peak, your optimum. That's number one, or you're not going to feel confident approaching women. Secondly, art actually is quite interesting. You'd be surprised. Once, remember, once they're physically attracted to you, they're really interested in who you are. Women are interested in, in, in guys that, for example, like you will see in all the romantic movies. Oh, what's that movie with Diane Lane? Uh, Unfaithful. You ever see that movie? She like, she winds up cheating on her very financially stable husband, actually, with this like artsy type. He's an artist. He lives in Soho. So those artsy musicians, um, creative guys are very appealing to women. But again, usually they come in the package of a guy with like, you know, the T-shirt, the jeans. He's got some muscles. He's got a little edge to him. He's got a little bit of those bad boy qualities where like he's a little bit guarded. He's stoic. So just know that, you know, and, you know, I wouldn't run over to a girl and be like, hey, you want to talk about some art? You know, no. But if you've got more to you, more dimension to you, that's going to help you in the long run. It's not going to help you get in the door. What's going to help you get in the door is first and foremost, getting your shit together, being confident and something you can't control. Is she attracted to you? If she's not attracted to you, leave. Uh, end of story. Nope, not going to work. Go to somebody. I'm telling you straight up, it's not going to last if she's not attracted to you. I'm just being honest. Don't shoot the messenger. Okay. Uh, Omega gave 10 bucks, said, uh, now you're using the point that I used last time that you had rejected. Uh, if a woman isn't attracted and you try to charm, it won't work. And just for the record, last time he said, on the cold approach, looks are very important to women. The difference between a creep, friend zone, and potential date is his look. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I don't know what I disagreed with on that show. I have to go back. Maybe it was related to content or something. I might have been talking about like whole package. I don't know. You could be right, but this is, this is how I feel. So I, I agree with you. I think, I mean, it's not just, again, though, it's not going to be as easy as like, a generic good looking guy. Cause that's another thing that I think people say, Oh, well, if Brad Pitt walked up to, you know, or I grew up in New York city where there were all those like finance guys, you know what I'm talking about? Those guys that are always like in the suit with the tie, like they, they are super well-groomed fancy shoes. And I worked at a lounge downtown. Uh, I was a cocktail waitress at a lounge downtown. Um, it was a place called Romy at the time. And it was right on Rector street. So we would get like all the finance guys coming in for happy hour. And I was like, rah, rah. like, that's not my type. So that's like not going to do it for me, but it will do it for somebody. Somebody likes that like super group. So it's not just about like universal generic looks. It's about what you're attracted to. Some of that's going to be like, you're just, you know, good looking to them. And some of that's going to be your attitude. Um, everybody's got a different type, you know, guys too, you have different, you know, you have something you're, some of you drawn to like the blondes more than the brunettes, you know, not to say guys are as picky. I don't think they are by a long shot, but you've got your preferences, you know, things that catch your eye more than others. We all do. Okay. 
Uh, last one, Smoking Patriot gave $5. Uh, many women prove the red pill guys right, talking down to most men like they are peons, and the women are queens. Yeah, and that comes from society being like, treat your woman like a princess. You know, they have those little shirts that are like, I'm a princess with a little crown, and treat your girl like a queen no matter what. And the no matter what stuff rubs me wrong. Like, I feel like in a relationship, you've got to earn that, you know, you have to treat somebody well and get treated well in return, mutual respect and all that. So, I, guys, listen, woman's disrespecting you, just don't tolerate that stuff. You got to get out. If you're in early and, you know, you're a few dates in and you see that disrespect, mm -mm. or you see her saying things like, I was told that I should be treated like a queen because I'm the female. In the meantime, she's throwing all types of disrespect your way. Mm -mm. Nope, nope, nope. You get on out of there because that's not, there are women who don't behave badly. And there's a lot of them. Okay, w wing woman advice. This is, this is really too much. Let's play this clip, 4453. This is what she, this woman says she tells her male friend to do in a situation where he's trying to get a girl. Listen up. I got one of my friends, okay, so I, I, I test this out. Like, I helped one of my friends get laid, yeah? Do you know how I did that? Because I said to him, don't approach and tell her that she's got a mad body. Tell her that you love her style and that you'd like to know her. You know, and that you'd like to do something wild with her, but you don't mean to disrespect her. If she's up for it, great. If she's not up for it, I'd like to be your friend. He got it straight away. You told him, <laughs> hold on, wait. You told this guy, your friend, you're trying to help him out. You're being a wing, wingman right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. You told him to tell a woman, I'm trying to be, if it doesn't work out one way, I'm trying to be your friend. So you're going to friend zone yourself <laughs> and say, I'm trying, bro. Because he was nah, just looking not, for nah. a beat. It's fantastic. That's the exact reaction, by the way, that I had when I heard this the first time. Because isn't isn't your biggest fear as a guy or your biggest concern if you really dig a girl? The worst nightmare is that she's like, well, you know, I really just don't want to get in something right now, but we could be friends. You're just like, Mer. like you're just like, bye. You know, that is the worst advice I have ever heard, guys. First of all, if you see a girl across the room who you think is hot, please don't like encapsulate that statement in some nonsense about oh I like your style and I really she'll get believe me on the next page we're going to talk about how she thinks a guy should approach you and talk about your outfit oh nice jacket don't do any of that stuff because it sounds fake it sounds so fake if a guy came up to me and was like oh I really like your style I'd be like oh what a horrible line who told him to say that you think somebody's cute you just say it you be honest about it you be confident about it never Never suggest to a woman that you're interested in that if things don't work out, we could be friends. That is so horribly unattractive, horribly unattractive. Like even if she was into you when she saw you, even if she thought you were cute, you had the attitude walking over, even if you deliver the great intro line, you have that little tag in there. Like if it doesn't work, we can be friends. Oh man, she's just like, bye. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Alpha guys would never do that. Come on. A guy who was confident would never do that. And then she's thinking, well, is he okay with being my friend? If he's okay being my friend, I don't need to be here. No. Actually, I'll go so far as to tell you that what's attractive to a woman is a guy who will outright say, let's say you go over to her and she gives you that line or whatever. Oh, I'm not really looking for anything right now, but we could be friends. And let's say you turn around and you're like, listen, babe, I I'm not looking for any more friends. I'm really into you and that's where it ends. Uh, I'm, I'm not interested in the friend game. Walk away. I will guarantee you that there will be a percentage of those guys that now get a second look because you had the nerve to say that. And she's like, oh, wait a minute, that was kind of, mm. So you need to stand up for yourself because let's be real. Are you looking for another friend or are you that guy who's hoping you're going to become friends with her, right? It's all going to be fine and good. And then suddenly she's going to wake up one day and want to have sex with you. Nope. Doesn't work like that. It's always a disaster. She needs to want to have sex with you first and then you can become friends through the relationship meaning of course everybody who gets into a deep relationship there's components of that that's a friendship because you're having you know talks she's leaning on you you get to know each other's families there's a component in there that involves friendship that comes first it's a hot mess oftentimes and I know I'm gonna have people out there to say well my husband and I were friends for five years and then we started dating and it all went well you're the outliers again outliers do exist there are people who don't fit into the statistics they exist I, in many respects, in my past and how I lived, I don't fit into the stats. People, again, people exist to our outliers. That is not the norm. The vast majority of times, you've got that guy sitting around 
waiting for her to promote him from friend to lover and it never happens because if she wanted you to be the lover you would have been the lover to begin with okay we all know it's true okay let's go to 47 12 personality let's talk more about personality shall we <sighs> personality in a man the way you speak to a woman is actually more important than what you look like men look at visuals women look at what you say that's what it is literally so if a and guy I'm... if a guy if a guy approaches you and he looks like he sleeps on the street yeah, <laughs> and he's five foot five and he's unattractive but he has a banging personality you're going to date him but it's not about dating come now okay and this gets rich i know you're like stop pausing it i have to i have too much to say okay again yes women do care about what you're saying and how you speak if she's physically attracted to you these are all this all this stuff that she's saying comes after i don't want to hear some nonsense from some girl saying oh no i prioritize personality so if you look like you were living on the street and you're like all bummed out and you look a little dirty and your hair is nasty and maybe even smell a little bad but you have a great personality i'm down she's lying honey stop lying you know that if you're not sexually attracted mm -mm. You've already, like, you put them on the B team instantly. Come now. Okay, let's keep going on this one because this this gets into some uh, interesting conversations about these guys that look like they're living on the streets. Yeah. 48 or keep going with that one? Um, let's keep going with that one. Actually, no, let's go to 48. Let's go to 48. At the end of the day, you could say, oh, yeah, it's all about personality and blah, 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 okay. blah. How I many guys, how saying. many times have you dated a guy, a guy's come up to you and he looks like he, as the same example I gave to Danalva, <laughs> he looks like he sleeps on the street, he's five foot five, and he's unattractive. Okay, I'm not Bruh, saying that the one night it... stand kind of guy is going to be like the, you know, the guy that sleeps on the street, whatever. Yeah. That's not the one night stand kind of guy, but the guy that I date is the personality guy. I didn't even, bring, I didn't even bring personality or one night stand into I know, I understand. I'm just I'm saying just in saying. general, would you even go on a first date with yeah, that guy yeah because of our personality, personality. okay yeah. wait oh, wow, this is too much did you catch it i'm hoping that you caught what i caught so she has two separate categories here this doll she's something she's got two categories she's got the one night stand guy and then she's got the relationship guy the guy that she really wants to date and what she just tried to sell you is that the one night stand guy that matters his looks to her she's concerned about his looks yeah because you know if it's a one night stand you've got to be sexually and physically attracted so the looks matter but if it's a guy that she wants to date suddenly the looks aren't a priority and the personality matters so are you only dating guys you're not physically or sexually attracted to that makes no sense what she just said makes no sense also honey why are you sleeping with people that don't have a good personality why are you doing that? That's nasty. Just a side note. But did you see that? Do you see the discrepancy between what she's saying? So one night stand, she puts you in a box. Oh, yeah, he's got to be hot. I got to be into him. That's going to be some steamy sex. Oh, yeah, bring it on. Okay. If, you, if it's somebody that she wants to date, though, oh, he's really sweet. He likes to pet puppies. Oh, he donated to an animal shelter. He tells a really funny joke. You think that's going to last? You think if she's talking to her friend at night and she, okay, she met you at the bar. Let's just create a scenario. She met you at the bar and she calls her friend up and she's like, oh, Diane, I met this guy. He's really nice. Oh, really tell me about him. Oh, he donates to an animal shelter and I saw him pet puppies at the park. He was super gentle. He told a really funny joke. That girlfriend of yours is going to be like, mm, what else, honey? Mm. Because you didn't mention one thing about physical attraction. You didn't mention one thing about what he looked like. You didn't say, oh, my God, he's so fine. Oh, my God, I got to get this guy. Oh, my God, he's so hot. Oh, my God. If you're not saying all that stuff about how hot he is and, oh, my God, I was, like, dying. Oh, my God. You're not saying all that? Mm -mm. You already friend-zoned him. You're just not willing to admit it. And I guarantee you that relationship is not going to be one that lasts. Okay. Let's keep going. Oh, this is the best. So this same girl that gave the horrible wing woman advice, wing man, whatever you want to call it, now decides that she is going to talk about her ex-boyfriend. And she is here to tell you she really does care about personality. And here is why. She's going to make her point right here. Tell me if you catch this one. 52? Yep. One of them had a gut toots with goggly eyes, not really that tall, big feet, skinny legs, 
Um, but he was quite sweet, quite gentle, was lovely. Did um, you give him the box quick? No, we took our time as well. Uh, yeah, I bet you did because he looked <laughs> goggly eyes and he bright. He looked like crap. That's no, why. No, because I actually liked him and I wanted to take him seriously yeah, because his personality was nice. He's a good guy. I yeah, wanted him to be a husband. That's sweet. Of course. Of okay, course. so come now. I mean, can you, this, this is the craziness. The comedy just writes itself. She's talking about this ex-boyfriend she had. She's trying to tell you she really cares about personality. So she's talking about this guy, about how he's got these googly eyes and he's short and he's got like the big feet and the skinny leg. Could she have described him any worse, honestly? I mean, just imagine... Put a visual in your mind to correspond, to correlate to what she just said. Not the most attractive specimen. Interesting that he's an ex-boyfriend. I wonder why. That's a puzzler. i got to scratch my head on that one. And she's trying to tell you all that. And then she's saying she didn't sleep with him right away. And the guy is like, well, yeah. Because it's pretty obvious to everyone who's paying attention you weren't attracted to him. Now, let me talk about this for a second with the sex. If you are a female out there and you make all guys wait for sex because you're the type of woman that pairs sex with emotion. You prioritize that. You were raised to have self-respect for your body and you're not going to put out quickly. So you're making everybody wait because you care a lot about your body and you're going to go on those dates. You're going to feel it out. You're not going to jump into bed with anyone. That I can respect across the board because that's about you and your value system. Maybe you're religious. I don't know what it is, but that is your value system that you are unilaterally, unilaterally placing across the board. But what I don't have respect for is the women who will jump into bed with the bad boy or jump into the bed with the guy who's super hot or the one night stand guy. For that, they'll jump into bed, be super, you know, loose, whatever. They're down for anything, night one. But the relationship guy has to wait. What's that about? What kind of message are you sending to that relationship guy if he has to wait for the sex, but you're willing to hop into bed with everyone else in between that you're super physically attracted to, that guy's going to walk away thinking, well, she's not super attracted to me because if she was, I would be on that list of guys that's pretty long of people who she's hopping in and out of bed with like that. It's a fair takeaway. Okay, it's not the same takeaway if that woman is being selective across the board and maybe comes to the table and is honest and is like, listen, I don't. I don't have sex, you know, right away. Like, that's just part of my moral upbringing. That's how I was raised. And it's across the board. So this stuff, they I don't know who they think they're impressing by saying there's a one-night stand guy that's super hot. And then there's a relationship guy who has to wait for the sex. Who, who are you trying to impress with that nonsense? Everybody with a brain sees right through that. That's a lot of games you're playing. Not appreciated. Not appreciated. Okay. This is the best now. We talk about going to the club. We're going to get back to the chat in just one second. So if you've got a super chat, get on in there. Tyler's watching. Now we talk about going to the club and the kind of compliments that you would want to receive as a female if you were in the club and there was a guy who, uh, you know, you, you kind of caught each other's eye. <laughs> okay, let's go to 5728. Oh, I was really good today. They because... always catch me when they say, oh, my God, your jacket's sick. I'm like, oh, thank exactly. you. Do you really think the guy cares about your jacket? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Not he necessarily. Gets oh, like, oh, we're oh, oh. So it doesn't matter it. if the guy's lying. Okay. <laughs> Sell Is me it, a dream, hold on, baby. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. So, the first, so you don't mind if the guy, it doesn't matter. It was what you just said. So the first thing a guy can say can be a lie. So it's already toxic. As from long the, as it comes across as genuine. As long. There's always an excuse. It's a starting point. <laughs> it's a starting it's point. It's my all thought. about having a starting point of a conversation. I'd rather you comment on my jacket than to comment on my say you're, you're on my yes. face say you're the hottest girl in here. These yes. times I'm looking at other girls, I'm like, but you could think she's hot. You could think she's hot. It doesn't yeah. matter what why it is you, about why, the If approach. the guy says that you're the hottest girl in here, isn't look subjective. So if he thinks you're exactly. the hottest girl, I mean, sure, no, it's not exactly. Like, it's not exactly. You okay. just said... How ridiculous is this that she's saying she would want a guy to come up to her and be like, oh, I really like your jacket. <laughs> come on. Come on. Does, does every thinking woman out there not know in that instant, oh, he likes what's under the jacket, but he's not talking. Come, you think a guy is in there and he's like looking at the fashion. Oh, she's real shoes are really, you know, let me go over there. If a guy came up to me and said when I was single, I really like your jacket right then and there, done. I can't because now you're using a pickup line on me when we both know that what you really like is the way I look in the jacket because you're into me. You're into my physical appearance. Just have the gonads to say it. 
you look really good. I think you're really like, you know, I think you're pretty. I think you're a hot girl. I think you're this. Like, put the words out there that you mean, however you want to word it. I can't try to be a guy in that situation. I don't have that. I don't have that guy game. (laughs) You know, that's your job, not mine. But you can't be talking about her jacket. And the best part about this is that the women say, oh, I know it's fake, but it's okay. Lie to me. Lie to me. Right from the get go. Wouldn't you rather have him come over and give him a compliment he actually means? No joke. I'd rather have a guy. This is like a guy coming over to you and being like, I really like your jeans. You got these like snug fitted jeans, the kind that like basically they're like glued on. You can't barely get them on, barely get them off. Girls, you know it. We all have those jeans. And a guy comes over and he's like, I really like your jeans. Is that not just corny as all hell? You know he's talking about your booty? He's not talking about your jeans. Now he came over and complimented your jeans. That's just dumb. Mm -mm. Don't do that. Don't be fake. We all know it. Can you imagine this nonsense? All right. She goes on and on and on now. Uh, I'm going to skip over because now she talks about why people go to the club. This same girl apparently feels that when you're looking for deep connection, deep emotional conversation, you go to the club. Don't we all? No? Okay. Let's go to 102.15. 102. <clears throat> Everyone is in trouble because people are always going for the superficial, thinking about getting their penis wet, instead of thinking about the fact that you want somebody that can be more substantial, that can look beyond why are you moving, the smoke why are you, and why, why are you trying to find them in the club then? No, but you, just because, you you, no? because you're in the club, it doesn't mean that you're just there to get, to get anything. People go to the club to hang out with their friends, to dance, to do everything. I don't go to the club to pull men. I go to the club to speak to people that I think could bring value to my life. And not everybody does. You the go club to the, the club to find people that will bring value yes. to your life. I go the yes. club. to shake my boots. The club. <laughs> yes. I don't go. And that's not one of the, part, the only thing, the wow. reason why, why I go there. I don't speak to men because I want to be with them all the time. I speak to men because I notice certain things about their energy that tells me, actually, you could be somebody valuable to speak. <laughs> To. You should do speed Energy. dating. Not everybody that you goes to clubbing wants to Okay. She should do speed. All right. So how many of y'all been to a club? You, one thing you know about a club, if it's a good club anyway, oftentimes you can't even hear the person next to you. You got to shout, right? You're like shouting at like 10 decibels above normal human sound just to be like, you want another drink? You know, it's, This is not a place people go. For networking and deep conversation and emotional connection, you go to the club to find people to bring value to your life. Okay, that's a lie. Come on. You want to find people to bring value to your life? Maybe you go to the museum. You can go to a lunch with a group of friends where you can actually have a conversation. You don't have to shout at each other like you do in a club to hear anything. Let's be realistic. Now, do girls sometimes go to the club to dance? Yes, girls like to dance. I used to go to the club a lot. Uh, I didn't drink, and I used to just dance, go crazy. So that is a a slight caveat I'll give you. Some girls like to go to the club to dance, but most women go to the club to dance, yes, but to dance in a place where they are noticed by guys. To dance in a place where they get dolled up, and they get a lot of attention, and they go home with a big ego boost, to dance in a place where somebody comes up, asks for their number. Maybe they're not out to, to hook up that night. I'm trying to sit, I'm, not, I'm trying to, you know, not all girls are looking for that instant hookup. Some are, but maybe they want to, you know, get that number for later. They're there for the attention, right? They go there to dance, but they like that they get the attention. They like that the guys notice, they're talking, there's the guys that look while you're standing on top of, you know, there's those like things you can stand on top of, make a real spectacle of yourself. We've all done it. Let's own up. They're not just there. If they wanted to just dance, they'd do it in their own living room, right? They like the whole feel of the whole experience. And it's fun, right? You go there. Maybe some of them like to drink or whatnot. But this craziness that you're going to the club to meet people who are going to bring high value to your life is too much. I mean, the delusion is just so rich. All right, let's talk about boyfriends. And boyfriends who are cool with you going to the club with your single girlfriends who are out there looking for hookups. Let's talk about those guys. She thinks those guys are super cool. They're not. So let's go to 104.15. Like, I have a couple 
like teammates from college who had a boyfriend and they would go out to the club with the rest of us. They weren't looking for anything. They had a boyfriend. They just wanted to like that's come out with us. You know what I mean? Dance. Awesome. Is it love? Is it love? I think that's disrespectful I to your man. No, they weren't. I mean, why is it disrespectful? Because they weren't ever doing anything with anyone. They just wanted to hang out with their friends. They're just putting themselves in a in a position where they where something silly could happen, though. Yeah, okay, but like how? If, if you're, you're not tempted you by that, okay, they're in a serious committed relationship. Okay, if they're not tempted by anything, they just want to hang Until out. Like for tempted. example, no, but they aren't. Like, no, but yeah, that's everybody, yeah, but everybody, talking, you know? yeah, but everybody can say I'm not tempted until okay. they are tempted. So where is the guy? Where is the boyfriend? Why isn't he there? You ever wonder about that? Like why? Let me tell you something straight. Okay, if a girl really likes you as a guy and she's going to the club she wants you with her she wants to have that drink with you she wants to get tipsy with you she wants to do the sexy dance with you she wants you with her if she's really into you if she's making plans to go to the club and she's gone with a bunch of single girlfriends or even girls that have boyfriends but none of the guys are there she doesn't like you that much. She doesn't. She wants you to stay at home because she's still got her eye open on the dance floor. She still wants that attention. And she's still got one foot out the door where she's like, well, I like this guy, but I'm not 100% sure. So I want to go. I want to get my groove on. I want to see how much attention I get. I want to know that I've still got it, that I still have options because I promise you, if she's super into you, she's going to want to spend that Saturday night with you and she's going to want you there. No question. Also, if you are a guy who's really, really into your girl, well, actually, let me hold that part for 13002. Let's go to that one because then we're going to get to the guy's angle. That's the last clip here before we move into some stuff about the matrix that you need to know. So we'll check in with the chat. Do you know what we Sorry, we'll check in with the chat right after this clip. Super chats, come at me before we switch over topics. Okay, let's go. He's the most sexiest man, is a man that is opinion. so sure, in my opinion, is a man that is so sure of himself that he'll be like, babe, you look amazing. Go kill it in the world. And he knows that when you step out and you look amazing, no matter where club. you are, no matter where you are, whatever terrain it is, he knows that because of how he feels about himself as a man, he knows he provides and he is the man that he needs to be for you. He doesn't even have to worry. He knows my woman got me. My woman is loyal. Are you in a relationship? I'm not because I choose not to be right now. Okay. I'm making so better decisions. You, make let me ask you, if you're loyal to your boyfriend, what are you doing in the club without him? Why you got to be in the club without him? It's just not like you're going out to lunch with a girlfriend, you're going shopping, you're, you know, going for coffee. Why are you going to the club, but he's not there? You know what the club's about. There's drinking there. People get rowdy. People make bad decisions. Guys are always approaching you or, you know, a lot of guys do approach or if not approaching, staring, gawking. There's all that stuff going on. People are drinking, you know, their decision making isn't exactly 100 percent clear because of the substances and all that. Why, if you're 100 percent loyal to your man, you got to go to club without him. Explain it to me. I would love to hear a good answer on that. Here's what's sexy in a man, by the way. It is not sexy. Let me repeat this again. It is not sexy for a guy to sit at home and his woman to say, oh, I'm going to the club with a bunch of my friends. You know, it's just going to be girls night. Sorry. And he's like, okay, babe, uh, I'll be here when you get home. Um, is there anything you want me to get for you? Or you need some money for the Uber? <laughs> you need some money? You need some cash for the drinks? That's not sexy. Unattractive. What is sexy as if that guy says, you know what, babe, I'm not super comfortable with that. That doesn't really work for me because, you know, I know what the club is like and you look beautiful and all that. But, you know, I really feel like I should be there with you. I'd love to come. And if I can't come, I really don't feel comfortable with you going at all. Pause. Wait. See what she says. You would be surprised how many women will never tell you, but they will appreciate that you have that territorial nature because now they know you give a damn. Now they know you care about them. So now they know that you have a backbone. Now they know that you are a masculine, real guy that's going to speak up and say what is obvious to everyone, which is that if you are with a guy, you are dating someone and you're going into a place which, where hookup culture thrives and lives and grows and flourishes, that he should be with you. It's totally ridiculous. So have a backbone. And if she decides she wants to go anyway, well, maybe she's not the girl for you because do you really want to be that guy that sits at home every, you know, other Saturday for girls night wondering what's going on? That's just an uncomfortable situation. 
If I were a guy, I would not be signing up for that stuff. That would just not interest me whatsoever. And by the way, have enough of a backbone to say that doesn't interest me. And to stand up for yourself, don't sit and tolerate it because you feel like in order to keep your girl, you got to put up with all this nonsense all the time. If that's going to make you sick at home or upset, you need to vocalize how you feel and maybe end that situation if that situation has gotten out of hand and you're no longer comfortable. That's, that's a truth some people don't like to hear, but it's a reality that people need to face. Okay, let's go to the chat. Iron Disciples gave $5. Uh, interesting point here. He said, do you think women who are used to a fire hose of attention from social media, guy friends, etc., can turn that off for one man's attention? Yes. Yes, I do. But here's the thing. Actually, let me think about this and how I word this. The reality is the woman that will be inclined to really be good one-on-one and will appreciate that attention from a man will not be splattered all over OnlyFans and Instagram half naked and will not be engaging at that level to begin with. So here's what I'll say to you. I think there are a lot of women who are sucked into that world now and a lot of women who think they're supposed to be in that world now and are hypersexualized across the internet and engaging, getting the DMs, getting that. And I think if you like that, if you get like a thrill out of that, if that's like something that gives you that little zest, then no, you're not going to be satisfied with attention from just one man if you have to turn all of that off. I think there are probably a small number of women that are in that and don't really enjoy it, but they feel like they have to be in that in order to find a guy and would be able to turn it all off. But you're going to be looking for a diamond in the rough because most women are so used to that. And here's how you test it. You, when you, when you get with a girl and your things are going really great, maybe you bring up if the Instagram's looking a little too much, maybe you bring up like, Hey, why, why are there, you know, 65 Instagram photos here of you half naked and I'm not in any of them with you. You know, you ever see those pages of the girls, Tyler, I don't know if you've seen these, but you'll see like a girl's got an Instagram page and you know her. So, you know, she's got a boyfriend, but you would never know it. If you looked at the page, there's like. That guy is just like, maybe you see like a shadow of him on a door occasionally. So, you know, you know what that is. And if you bring up that reality and she's hesitant to change the dynamic that publicly looks very single because she feels like, you know, on the inside, that's going to reduce options or that's going to be uncomfortable for her, then you got a problem. And I, I do agree. I, my, my instinct was to say yes that a woman would be content, but I think the number of women that actually will be able to be content with that one guy, you're not going to find those girls on Instagram all over the place, half naked, like on OnlyFans to begin with. So use that as a sign. That's my honest take. Uh, our boy, Silly Sausage is back. Uh, so this is just pure hypocrisy. It's the embodiment of the exact person you never want your girlfriend to hang with. Uh, absolute Sausage, friends kept her single. I think he's talking about this woman here that we just referenced. Mm-hmm. Just kind of slamming her. Um, John said, for me, just a female hiding their Instagram is a red flag right there. And their friends uh, really having multiple accounts, definitely ho tendency. Oh, dude. <laughs> Straight up, if she's got multiple accounts or she keeps the Instagram from you, uh, get out now. Get out while you've still got time. Mm-mm. No, no, no. And I'm also, listen, I'm not a fan of like, I've seen, you know, instances over the years, over the last, I'd say, six or seven years where I've had single female friends that are weird about their phone. You know them. You know the type. They've got like a whole life going on in that phone that their significant other doesn't know about. And I've seen some of those messages. And let me tell you, I don't think that their boyfriends would be so content to read them. So if she's weird about her phone, like if the phone is always locked or the phone is, it does something wrong there. I'm sorry. Like, what are you doing in your phone? And people say, oh, well, it's private. It's private. Mm-mm. There's a reason. If you're we- super weird about your phone, honestly, something's going on. You're, you're doing something, something, because otherwise you just wouldn't care. And I'm not saying somebody should sit there and be looking through your messages, paranoid, you know, I, no, because you can't have a relationship like dynamic, dynamic like that either. But if there's a, a weird, like obsessive, like keep the phone away from you, keep it locked. She's holding the phone like this to text while you're sitting next to her to make sure that you don't. Mm-mm. Bye. See you later. Next. Okay. I need to uh, dig into a couple of these things because I was asked last show. So I want to close out this show by talking a little bit about the matrix. There's a video that popped up. Y'all know who Klaus Schwab is? 
I don't know if you know who that is, but, and this is important. So please, if you're into the dating stuff, this is going to loop in pretty tightly with what Andrew Tate says about the matrix. So please stick around for this. This is very, very important stuff. Klaus Schwab is the head of the World Economic Forum. He's the executive director. And there was a tweet that came out. I'm just going to play. Do you see that tweet that I have from Jason? Um, Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to play from 20 seconds on. If you can't understand him well, don't worry. Just sit tight for a second, uh, and I'll stop. I'm going to stop and go. Just go. Let's just start at 20, and let's go. It's a deep, systemic, and structural restructuring of our world. And this will take some time. And the world will look differently after we have gone through this transition process. Okay, so that's actually all I need from him because I know he's insufferable um, on many levels and, and quite evil in my opinion, to be quite frank. So what did he just say there? When he talks about, this is the Matrix, by the way. This, is, this guy is one of the heads of the Matrix. He's at the top of the chain. What did he just say there? A deep systemic and structural restructuring of our world. Hmm. This will take some time The world will look differently after we have gone through this transition process. What you need to realize is that these globalists, they're coming for you. They're coming for your individual freedom. They're coming for your individual sovereignty. They're coming for national sovereignty in many respects because the fact that the United States of America still stands for, in some part, what it stands for, and I say that with an eye roll because we all know that the land of the free isn't so free after COVID. A lot of people's individual freedoms were trampled on. But what they really want is they want to take from you your financial independence. They want to take from you your ability to get from point A to point B without them above you supervising that process and giving you the okay. That's what we're talking about when we talk about the central bank digital currency. That's what we're talking about when we talk about a digital ID. The reason people get so crazy with a digital ID is because think about it. If everything is digitized and everything is centralized and everything is operated from a top, meaning you've got a whole bunch of globalists that want to be able to decide if your behavior is good or bad, then what, what can be used against you? Well, all of it. They can rob you of your financial independence because they can then decide if you need to show a digital ID to get in somewhere, then they can say, well, this person has lived their life in X, Y, and Z way, so they're not going to gain access to this. And we saw that with the vaccine mandates and the vaccine passports. You saw for the first time that I ever, ever had ever witnessed in society in my lifetime, you saw massive discrimination happen in society where people who had made a different medical decision, some of which, by the way, made that medical decision in consult with their own physicians, didn't have access to gyms, didn't have access to restaurants, didn't have access to certain jobs, lost their jobs, despite having those letters and all of that stuff exempting them. So that was the groundwork. What's going to be the next step? Well, let's take a look at the World Economic Forum for a second. I want, to take, I want to show you a couple of tweets that are coming up because people say, oh, the World Economic Forum, that sounds great. It sounds like a utopia. Pay attention to what these people are trying. Look at this. Welcome to 2030. I own nothing, have no privacy, and life has never been better. Okay. This is a tweet from the World Economic Forum. I own nothing that's coming after your private property. You have no privacy meaning every single thing you do isn't private anymore because guess what? You're checking in everywhere with your digital ID. So they know exactly where you are all the time. They know where you, where you went on Saturday morning and after that. And they've authorized, all, oh, yeah, she behaved well. She did everything we told her to do so she can gain access. Oh, he didn't? Oh, he's got to get out. And on top of that, imagine a central bank digital currency where you are told that you can buy your ticket to freedom if you behave. And if you don't, oh, well, I guess you can't travel that day, and somebody else can. Let's look at that second tweet. Um, this, this was a tweet that came in. This is a video. Uh, I wasn't going to play the video. I think we should. I really think we should. It's from the World Economic Forum. It was since deleted in many locations, and um, it's been found, and, and people have played it. It's a video. Can we play that video, Tyler? Do we have it? Okay. I want want to show you this. This was eight predictions for the world in 2030. Take a listen, please.
Okay. So th- I need I, if I could shake you at home. This is the matrix that Andrew Tate is talking about. When you hear him talk about the matrix, the system, I know it's very hard to to pinpoint who that is. Like people will say, well, who specifically? This this organization. This is what we're talking about. Let's look at some of the language in here. You'll own nothing and you'll be happy. No private property? Oh, that's interesting. If you don't have private property, you don't have a home. You don't have your own independence without private property. They know that. You're going to rent everything. Who are you going to rent it from? You know when you rent, you have to listen to the person you rent from. You can't just do whatever you want. That's why people want to own a home, right? You can't even put up the blinds you want. You can't do this. You can't, you can't renovate. Oh, isn't that interesting? So they like that. Why? Because you're always answering to someone else. Drones? No thanks. You know what drones do. They spy on you. We know that. The U.S. won't be the world's leading superpower. So that's a goal. Very upfront. U.S. has too much power. You know why? Because the values that built this country, like freedom and opportunity, and all of those values that they say, by the way, Western values will be a thing of the past, to summarize, they're talking about that stuff. They're talking about your freedom. They're talking about personal responsibility. They're talking about all these things that you hear the guys like Tate talk about all the time. Own your own life. Own your own choices. Meat. Meat is under attack. You all like meat? Well, they would like you to eat less meat. They want it to be an occasional street, a treat, not a staple. And they want to decide what's on your dinner table. They want to decide that you've had too much meat. And why, why the attack on meat, by the way? Because meat is being utilized as a reason to go after the carbon footprint. To Climate change is going to be the next fear porn that comes down the pike here. We saw it with COVID. They scared the heck out of so many people. And what happened? The fear took over and people like all of a sudden found themselves cooperating with lockdowns, cooperating with mandates. All of a sudden, all of your freedom had been taken away from you. Why? Because you allowed it. You allowed the fear to take over. Well, guess what? Climate change is part two. Climate change is part two. They're going to scare everybody into thinking the world's going to end. And what do they want to do? They want to, and they say it here, less carbon footprint. What does that mean? That means they want to cut energy independence for this country. That means that they want to tax and regulate the heck out of the energy industry. What's that going to do to energy prices and energy costs? And what happens then? You have less money. You have less stability. You have less freedom. You're more likely to lean on big daddy and mommy government, which, by the way, to these people means globalist government. It doesn't even mean big daddy and mommy, mommy American federal government. They're talking way bigger than that. Because they need the United States to be a little bit deprioritized, to sit back a little bit, and share the stage. So you need to know what's going on here. These people want to tell you how to live. They want to tell you what to eat. They want to tell you not to own property. They want to tell you not to be free. And maybe the next time a pandemic rolls around, they want to be able to force you to get whatever you know big pharma drug comes down the pike. Or else you won't maybe be able to buy a plane ticket. Or maybe you won't be able to, to do whatever they decide in that moment, you shouldn't be allowed to do. So I need your eyes open because we can talk about all the dating and relationship stuff in the world, but you have to understand that part of that, and I always talk about is pulling men and women apart and decreasing the stability of that nuclear family. These individuals who want that are sitting right here atop the World Economic Forum. They need you weak. I always say they need you unhealthy and they need you afraid because if you're afraid, you're more likely to allow yourself to become a dependent. And I found a few videos, actually, I didn't show them today, of Andrew Tate actually talking about some of this stuff directly. And you see it, the campaign to eat bugs. Why would somebody want to take a beautiful grass-fed, grass-finished steak off your plate? Beautiful, delicious, makes you feel good when you eat it, energized, builds up that muscle, and put a bunch of crickets on there. You think that person's looking out for you? Mm Mm-mm. I don't think so. Um... I'm going to skip the, the message from Jordan, by the way, Shatchel. I don't know if I'm saying his name right. He has a dossier. He's fantastic. And he, he's got no fear of the matrix. He writes a lot about these guys. Um, and he has a, a couple of things in, in his article here. I don't want to read it because it's pretty long. But he talks about, this is actually interesting. I'll read this one part to you. We're talking about Klaus Schwab. Schwab describes this cohort of supposed evildoers, people he doesn't like as conspiracy theorists who are responsible for all the world's ills. These individuals prop up anti-science movements. In other words, by the way, people who oppose vaccine mandates that prolong the waning of the COVID-19 pandemic, adding that this group is hindering both public health and more fundamentally our ability to move forward in unison. So if you feel differently, you're a problem. 
I'm just trying to let you know that that what we talk about when it comes to dating, when we talk about these things in the dating world about masculinity, and we talk about these women that have been totally brainwashed, right? They're just puppets, puppets of the feminist movement. They don't even know what they're doing anymore. They're miserable, and they just keep doing the same thing. This is all by design. And these people who sit atop this globalist nonsense they're coming for you, <laughs> you, you sitting at home who wants to have autonomy, who wants to have personal responsibility, who wants to have your own property and your own land, who wants to take care of yourself and your family, you're a problem. So you need to have your eyes wide open and be aware. And it would be really easy for me to sit here and just talk about the effects, which is that, you know, male testosterone levels are shrinking and we have a massive fertility crisis in this country because women are waiting longer and longer to have families and people are getting increasingly unhealthy and chemical exposures. We, we could talk about that. Great. But we also need to pay attention to the who of who benefits from all this societal decay that's going on. So we can laugh at some of what's going on and we can talk about it, but you need to stay alert because it's going to be much bigger than this. And I promise you, I promise you the fear porn that's going to come out of the climate movement in the next year is going to make the fear porn that came from them when it came to COVID look like nothing. So y'all better be ready. Um, do we have anything in the chat to get to? James gave $10, says, as always, it's about centralization versus decentralization of power. WEF's Klaus and Bigglesworth is just the latest iteration of the divine right of kings. Uh, KS gave two bucks, said this is comparable to China's social credit score. Uh, Omega gave two dollars. Said Klaus Schwab wants neo feudalism, not socialism. Okay, so I, I'm glad that people here are aware of who this guy is. Horrible. I mean, if you thought Fauci was bad, by the way, you should watch the documentary, The Real Anthony Fauci, because it's interesting. You don't have to agree with all of it, but it's interesting. I, I, I'm here to, you know, open minds, not close them. But this is really important stuff. Um, it's really important stuff when it comes to freedom, and I believe, by the way that this is why Andrew Tate got banned. It has nothing to do with this nonsense he was saying about, you know, women and men and not nothing. It has to do with the fact that this is a guy who has had a very big audience and was talking about personal responsibility and masculinity and not listening to what somebody else says just because they're saying it and, you know, making your own path for yourself and protecting and being that protector and that provider as a man and calling out people in society who wanted you to be a robot. And that is very, very intimidating to the people at the top. So they're not going to go after, you know, Joe over here who's got, you know, five subscribers and they, he don't, they don't view him as a threat. But Andrew Tate, who had a lot of guys listening, he's building up all these guys who are, you know what? Those guys listening to him are going to be the ones that when the World Economic Forum comes out with round two of whatever they're going to do, those are going to be the guys that say, yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. That's not going to work for me or my family. So next. So they need those people to be weak and they need them to be tired and they need them to not have someone to listen to that inspires them to be bigger and stronger and better than they are. So just know what's going on. Have your eyes open. I know people say, oh, conspiracy theory. Yeah, honey, it's not. Listen in his own words. You don't like it coming from my mouth? Listen from his. Listen to the videos. Look at their Twitter stream. Take them at their word. Okay, we're going to be back here on Monday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Um, I have another long, oh, my God. I watched some clips about an exchange on dating that's just going to make you I'm not even going to share it now, but let's just say you'll have those googly eyes that that boyfriend, that that girl ditched have by the end of it. Thank you for being here at Taco Friday. Go have some fun. <laughs>